TV Review is your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. Coming in with Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 2, Episode 2, Mail Special Delivery Part 2. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and get into it. I'm looking at myself in the view finder. Why we look like we just got baptized? Yeah, we do. <laughs> this is why I don't wear white. White always makes you look like you just came from the pastor's office. Yeah. And you're trying to get all your sins washed away. Yeah, trying to anyway, live trying to live a holy and pure lifestyle. Yeah, we show sure do like we just we are <laughs> sitting in the back waiting to be baptized. All you gotta do is start singing way in the water. Uh, take me, me to, to the, the wall. wall. We ain't come in for that. Yep, it's Sunday. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so we start off where we left off at last week, but we're Getting a little bit more detailed of how Mel and Martell really feels about their parents both not showing up to the baby shower, right? Yeah. And I can identify with both of them. It's like, black people, we need to talk. Like, we really need to sit down and talk about this here. And we need to we need to iron out some rules when it comes to parental responsibility versus when the child should have the responsibility of reaching out to the parent. Because I have not seen an even playing field yet. You will always have those people that will tell you as a child, you're not doing enough. You haven't reached out enough. Mm -hmm. You need to keep pushing yourself on your parent. I'm sorry, but as I remember it, I am a product of what you did. That's right. So why is it that I have to reach out to establish a relationship with you? That's right. You are responsible for bringing me here. Why aren't you responsible for that. Now, I do understand it takes a two-way street to have that happen. Yeah. But why do we always put that responsibility on the child? child? And I'm with Martell on that one. I've done what I needed to do. I keep reaching out, but what I'm not going to do is keep putting, trying to keep pushing myself on this individual. Mm -hmm. If you want to be in my life, you're going to have to show me that you are willing and able to do so. And if you are emotionally unavailable, then I'm just going to have to leave you emotionally unavailable over there because I'm not going to keep subjecting myself to your not being available to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I can speak on that because I have been in that situation yes. my entire life. And yes. let me tell you, when I say we <clears throat> wear the rules, me and my family go head to head almost yeah. at every function yes. because they believe it's my responsibility because my dad is such a nice guy. He is. Yeah. Like the personality you see with me, is I got that from him. Like, we are both the same freaking person. But everybody is like, well, you know how he is. You know that he likes to be by himself. Or you know he's a homebody. You know he don't fool with people like that. That's not my problem. Yeah. And what you don't know is I have been doing this month after month. But he's not going to tell you that because that's going to make him look bad. I reach out at least once a month just to say, hey, how you doing? Phone doesn't ring on this end, but my mama lives here. He calls her at least once a week in this house. We don't want to go into how I feel about that situation, but both yeah, of them don't need. Oh, another can of Both of them man. don't nearly got cussed out for that, cause I'm like, uh, where does Lynette ever get respected and protected? Yeah, and then the flip side of what, what we I, you know, never happened to me before, but I'm witnessing in other people. Is then when the parent is getting ready to die, mm -hmm. that's when they want to try to get it right with, with their kids. And it's like the kids kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like, do I be there for them now to ease their conscience or let them be by themselves how they wanted to be all their life? They didn't want nothing to do with me then. But now mm -hmm. all of a sudden they want to feel better before they depart to the other side because they don't want to, quote unquote, go to hell. So what do you do? Yeah. Do, do you go be with them? Or do you stand to your guns and be like, nah, y'all, you ain't want to do with me all my life, so die by yourself. And it's not even about holding to your guns, because it's not a competition here, and it's not that I'm going to do this because, because this is the that. way that I want it to be done. No, at the end of the day, I think you have a responsibility of what you will accept in your life and what you will not accept in your life. And I am able to reach out to my father once a month just to say, hey, how you doing, to check on him, because... Him rejecting me doesn't hurt anymore. But there are other people that have not gotten there yet. Yeah. So what you're trying to tell me is, in order for this person to pass over in peace, I need to be broken again. I need it's to subject fair. myself to hurt again nah, so that they can fair. go on in peace. And mm -hmm. that's not fair. Yeah. And the same people that's always telling you, you need to reach out, you need to do this. 
or you having that can't, same conversation with, with that them. person. Yeah. Because that's what me and my family get into about all and the time. And they don't. And they and don't. And I say, y'all always in my face about this, but have you sat down and had this conversation with him? Yeah. I had a whole, like, major surgery in February. He's called here and talked to the one that's two doors down right here. But they never asked. Talk to you? Never. But like you said, that that really needs to stop it does in, need to in stop. the black community because it happens. And I'm pretty sure it's going to happen to at least one of y'all that's going to see this video. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no real answer to it. So Mel and yeah. Martell, if y'all ever come across this video, I'm going to tell you from a person that can identify with y'all. And I know we don't see eye to eye on much. But you are going to have to get to a point where, and I think Martell is there, real talk. And because he makes so many mistakes in other places, nobody wants to acknowledge where he's right. Yeah. He is right in, if this is how he wants it, That's how, this mm -hmm. is how it's going to have to go. Exactly. It ain't no it ain't no beef. Mm -hmm. We ain't got no issues with each other. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to tolerate you it's telling me that you're going to be here, telling me you're going to work on stuff. When we get together, it's, oh, <laughs> my mm -hmm. hopes are up. Yeah. And then you just disappoint me again. Disappoint me again. Yeah. I'm not gonna keep accepting that. So next time you wanna reach out, doors open. It's cool. But I'm not gonna keep on knocking your door down. I'm not the Jehovah's Witnesses. I know that's right. I ain't gonna be able to do it. Because him and times you're gonna allow yourself to get hurt over and yeah. over and over again. I mean it, Yeah, that's the yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> Didn't mean to give y'all an earful, but that yeah. part right there, when that came on, Stanley was like, ooh, you can speak yeah, on that. I was like, to speak to that. oh, I definitely can. Yeah. But, um, so, Marto decides that um, because Mel has gone through a lot for these last few years, and she's having this fourth child, that he wants to give her a push gift. And he's at the jeweler, and he invites Mel's brother, is his name Marcus? I think his name Marcus. So, Marcus came through. Now, the whole thing with Martel was, I need to make Marcus see that I'm a changed man. I want him to see that I'm not going to hurt his sister again because Marcus is in big brother mode. Like, listen, yeah. you cool and whatever, and I've heard you apologize over and over. I believed you three, four years ago. We back here now. Again. What makes it different yeah. this time? Exactly. So Marcus was like, oh, this time I'm going to need you to, to give a look, like a real fat ring, like a big one. Yeah, so the circle won't be, be broken. broken. Yeah. You know, something that's not <laughs> easily tarnished, you know, that round and round with no interruption kind of love. He said, that get back down on your knee kind of Yeah. <laughs> and Martel is like, uh. So Marcus was like, you know what? Let's go ahead, man to man. Don't hurt my sister no more. Mm -hmm. You were out there, you know, and I understand how you got to where you are because you wanted to feel like the man. You wanted to feel like, feel that void of that brokenness that's in you. I get it. So you go out and have sex with another woman. So Martel was like, have sex? Who said I, I have sex? sex? I, I said, was like, come on, bruh. You done said it yourself that you did it. Now you're going to, you know, you're here to make it right with her brother, but you're still going to sit there and lie to his face. Mm -hmm. How you expect for the relationship to be repaired if you can't even be truthful about that? And you know, in real true-to-form fashion of these shows, road footage, when yep. him and my, him and Marceau and, um, um, Lord, what's Maurice. That? Maurice was, I tell you, there's too many freaking M's on yeah. the show. <laughs> was out there, he was like, you know, this the relationship was sexual. Yeah. Listen, we've all seen Arian's um, Instagram. She done posted pictures of y'all in the bed together. What was y'all doing, right? Reading Bible scriptures? I mean, there's only two things that be happening in the bed, and y'all were doing both. Exactly. Come on now. We, we not stupid. So Marcus was like, you know, we, we still going to be talking about this. And then Martel was like, you know what? And I don't want to talk about that situation again. You know, that's a deaded situation. You know, I don't... But here's the thing, Martel. Mm. You can't punch somebody in the face and tell them when to stop feeling the pain. Yeah. You don't get to cause an offense and then tell everybody when to stop talking about it. Yeah. They're going to talk about it until they are sure and that they have seen so much improvement that that situation is so far removed that you be like, oh, dang, I did do that back in the day. It's still fresh and it's yeah. still close to home. You just going to have to deal with it. Just because you feel like you good and you set free and deliver. Like when people go to church and yeah, all of a sudden they don't need drugs else, no more. Now they want everybody else to change. They want everybody else to change <laughs> and they don't want you to talk about yeah. how they broke in your house and sold your TV at the pawn shop. Yeah, that's week. over with now. That's in the past. I've changed. No, it don't Even work like that. Even though you like still recover. Yeah, that don't yeah. work like that. 
So but, you're going to have to take every punch that Marcus give you until he's satisfied. For real, for real. But let's look at it on the other flip side of it. Let's look at it from Marcus' standpoint of coming to his sister's rescue over and over again, knowing that pretty much she's going to go back to him. And we've seen that over and over again. So how many times do he need to intervene for his sister that's not going to take any action? That's a really good point. Yeah, because you end up causing this confusion with this brother. So your brother and your husband get into these ruffles and fighting and you still going back to him. So you damaging your brother's relationship too because you, you know, quote unquote, won't leave him alone. Right. But you want your brother to continue to rescue you. So... That's when why that, a lot when, of families that don't get into it. Yeah, real uh, talk. Like if we, if I know the kind of person that you are, I'm not I'm not getting into it. Yeah, like that, for real, for real, because y'all both gonna be mad at me, and y'all gonna be together. Yeah, we have a situation right now that I'm that I'm pissed about, mm. pissed. But I I can't get involved. I can't. Mm. Now they invite me to get involved, I would, but both parties would have to be present because mm. I don't believe in. Hearing your side and then hearing your side, I, I want to hear y'all side together. Yeah. Because y'all ain't going to play me. Because that's what ended up happening. Then, then both of them end up mad at you. And then they make up. Yeah, they make up and they mad at you. So, yeah. I, I stay away. <laughs> and that comes with age and maturity. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you. So, we get to a point where Marta eventually um, gives Mel the tennis bracelet that he had purchased for her. He didn't get the big fat ring. He got a tennis bracelet. And it was real cute how he gave it to her. They were packing the baby's um, bag for the hospital, yeah. their hospital bag. And he was loading her up with snacks. <clears throat> and he threw her a snack to put in a bag, but it really was the gift. And, you know, and she gets the crying and all of this. So then the next thing we see is they're on their way to the hospital to have the baby. She has a scheduled induction. Mm -hmm. But I was so confused because I was like, why y'all got all them kids in the bag? We y'all going with these kids to this hospital. Now, I ain't never had no children, but I don't been around a block or time or two. What you do is when you have a scheduled C-section or a scheduled induction, you take them over to your mom and them house the night before so that you don't have to wake them crumb snatchers up the next morning and get them situated. And then when they called the mothers and they was like, yeah, they're going to come and um, take care of the kids at the hospital. I said, huh? when what? This is, well, I don't know this is about all definitely pre-COVID. Yeah. yeah, I don't know <laughs> about all this. That's all jokes. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do yeah, with your make children. It work how you can make but it work. It didn't make sense to me. I was like, why do kids ain't over at the grandma house spending the night? And just y'all come in the morning when this baby is born after, you know, the afterbirth is washed away and the baby is cute. Maybe, maybe it's because of the recording of the show. Because they had to make sure they got footage so they just oh, the couldn't make it. family yeah, unit and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, you got to make all that come together for the show. But what I'm going to tell y'all this is, Melody had that baby like she was taking a good dump. Mm -hmm. Mel was like, oh, I'm in pain. Had that epidural. She on the computer doing yeah. <laughs> Nurse checked her. I was like, oh, I could feel her hair. And it was like, mm, baby, heal. Like, damn. I said, what? Because <laughs> I don't been in the delivery room before, and it did not happen like that. Because that's why editing <laughs> is a mug. <laughs> no, nah, I believe she really trooped that baby out. So? Yeah. Like, some uh. people do that. Have babies and ploop, ploop, ploop. Nothing. Well, but, this was their, what, fourth one? Usually, as they keep going along, I heard this, um, the babies, I heard deliveries are worse. Get worse? Really? That's what I heard. Oh, wow. It ain't like a practice run. <laughs> like yeah, I would, I would think every time it will get easier. <laughs> nah, I heard that's it. Go, well, I ain't going to get into it because I don't have kids. And I don't have a wound no more. So, I surely <laughs> ain't got a dog in this fight. Let the church say amen. Ooh. A whole lot of bop, bop, bop with no consequence. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Should have bought Honda. But anyway. If I had some holy water, I would throw it on you. <laughs> I already got baptized a few minutes ago. Yeah, you did. So, baby's born. Baby is beautiful. Got the nice little plump cheeks and all of this. Yeah. And Mel was like, you know what? Baby's here. I got to move on to baby number five. And she's launching this um, skincare line. And I was like, that's a good look for Mel. Because Mel's skin is amazing. And if you ever see her without makeup, I think she's so gorgeous without makeup. So, I'm like, that might be something I'll look into. Like, uh... How much is that skin cream? But I still think she's taking on a little too much right now, though. Martell says she's taking yeah, on too she much. Yeah, she is trying to, trying to start a new business and take care of a new baby. So, Ugh. he said that she's running on 50% with everything. And he was like, 
Nah. We need to uh, and give 100% to a whole lot of stuff that's going to make us some money. Money, yeah. I see money going out, but I don't see no money coming in. Martel, you've been in business long enough to know that there's going to be a whole lot of spinning, spinning, spinning mm-hmm. before you get a whole lot of chi ching 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 yeah. It just, you know that. I know that was for cameras and whatnot. But I'm going to speak on this here, right here. I'm sick and tired of production. And I ain't say it last week because I was like, I was a little late to the show. <laughs> but I had saw Arian had put on Instagram that these motherfuckers is a god D lie. That they keep saying that they reaching out to the person in question and cannot get in touch with her. Why did they put that same disclaimer on this episode as well? Mm-hmm. Come on, y'all. One, nobody asked y'all. So it's like, why y'all just go lie to us when we didn't even ask yeah, y'all a question? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> y'all could have could totally Skipped missed us all with that, that yeah. and nobody would have cared. But like Funga Daniva said on his review last week, if we all could get in touch with Arian. Why can't now, y'all? Why can't y'all? Yeah. And she talks. Yeah, I'll be, yeah, she'd be glad to talk. Yeah, yeah. for real, for real. <laughs> yeah. To tell her side of the story, but it is what it is. What else happened? So Mel is having this like, what do you want to call it? Like a, a launch, launch party, party. Yeah, it's a launch party for her skincare line, and this is where the baby special ends, and Love and Marriage Huntsville begins. begins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here well, come the drama. Tisha and Marcel were not invited to this. Mm-hmm. It's you know really Tisha and whatnot. We had seen that um, at, earlier in the episode, Martel had stopped by Kimmy's in them house to just make sure that in this thing of love and war, what side of the fence are y'all on? And I like Kimmy's position. Listen, I don't have a problem with y'all. Yeah. This is my family. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with nothing unless it's right here. Yeah. Y'all are grown. Y'all can handle y'all beef how y'all want to handle it. I'm going to stay out of it. I'm going to have my relationship with y'all over here. I'm going to have my relationship with them over here. We just not in a relationship all together at once. Because that's how the the skit just gets started. So that's a grown person's response. Grown and mature. Let's say that. That you able to do that. Because I got a whole lot of friends that don't like each other. But when we together, you're not talked about. No. Yeah, exactly. You're not brought up. And if you are brought up, somebody going to shut you down real quick. Yeah, because we ain't doing and that. And then be like, if you bring it up again, I'm going to let them know that you don't brought this up again. And yeah. I had to shut you down. Because what you're not going to do is some skit gets started. And then you be like, when I was out with Lynette, we and was discussing. About this? No. Uh-uh. One, I got hands. Two, I got license. No. I ain't trying to get in nobody's trouble. No. <laughs> ain't nobody got time. 41. I'm going to keep my record clean. I ain't been before the judge since I was 17. Man, you're doing good, man. I'm doing good. The Lord the Lord <laughs> gave you a new life, man. Yeah, he did. Cause, cause the judge told me that time, he said, I don't ever want to see you back here get it. I said, me? See, I looked at my hands. They look new. Looked at my feet. And they, they did, too. Good. And I ain't been before the judge since. But, Praise the Lord. But, yeah, that, that does come with maturity. Yeah, yeah. So, if that's you caught in the middle of a situation... No. Don't let two friends talk about each other around you mm-hmm. because you're going to end up be the one that's going to get hurt in mm-hmm. the end. I'm telling you. You're going to lose both friends. Yep. And then later on when they realize they won't like that, then they're going to send you that text. I was thinking about you mm-hmm. and just wanted to make sure that you and your family were well. Been praying for y'all. No, you realize you were wrong. Yeah. And now you're trying to smooth that skit over. But if you send me an edible arrangement, we'd be good. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you stupid. Just send me out of a rage, but we be good. So over there at Mel's launch party, right? Kimmy shows up. That couple from last week, what's her name? Destiny? Destiny, yeah. Destiny and Demarcus? No. I can't remember his name. Y'all know his name. Yeah. Um, and I know it too. Like um Rock say, don't put it in the comments because I know it. <laughs> <laughs> they were there. And Kimmy went and spoke to everybody, everybody, and she pretty much just turned her back and sashayed her way right on past them. And I said, "Yeah, that's what you get. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm you with come Kimmy at... on this. The energy you give me is what I give, give you back. back. To you. Yeah, you respect me. I respect you. I don't have to like you, but at least respect me. What you're not gonna do? One, we already had a conversation. Mm-hmm. I told you what I said. What I said." Then you're going to get on the microphone and then try to publicly shade me again shade and check me yeah. and embarrass me. And then you think the next time they come, come to your, your presence, place, that's how you doing. <laughs> this ain't church. 
This ain't and, what we gotta act, and, right? And one of the things that I know about Kim is she ain't she not fake. fake. She not she from the fake DMV. It. Yeah, she no not fake gonna fake it. Yeah, that's one thing y'all can say about the DMV. What was that post we People saw? We saw tell about tell you how they feel. I don't know if Kimmy is a Leo or not. She might. No, she, she's not. I she's not Leo. Because so. our greatest say, you know, whatever you give to a Leo, that's what they get right back to you. Mm-hmm. In that order. Or anybody in DMV. <laughs> so we're there. Mel does her whole speech. You know, Mel looked great. Um, Martel was there supporting. I love the pendant that he had on all that good stuff. And then we see Tisha pop up. And Tisha was like, you know what? I'm a new woman in business, you know. And I thought that this would be a great opportunity for me to support Mel. We're in a bad place. We're in a crazy space right now. Let me just show up at the event to show my support. I don't know where that comes from. Because, see, here's my thing. You can view it in so many different ways. As a person like myself, I always try to give what I would want someone to give me. Yeah. But I also have to read the signs and look at the footprints around that situation. This girl just had a whole baby shower and she purposely did Mm, not invite invite you. you. Yeah. It wasn't as if y'all just had a long span of time and y'all had a spat and y'all just kind of in that space where y'all just kind of just not bucket with each other right now. Mm -hmm. You know? Y'all not constantly beefing. You're not constantly throwing jazz. So you're just in that space where it's like, yeah, last time it I talked to her, it is. it is what it is. And yeah. I showed up at her event to show some support. That would have went over better than to just have a baby shower in which she did not invite you to. Mm-hmm. You knew she didn't invite you to it. It was on purpose. And then you just showed up at her private event. Now, I don't know if I would have went as far as this because she said, I don't trust Tisha and I don't know what she's going to do next. I was like, yeah, this is Tisha. Yeah, and I was like... I didn't think that she would just purposely... Yeah, I was like, are they... Act a fool. Are they that far gone where... Which you great talk about security, right? Yeah. That she gets security security. to to escort her out. Yeah, I didn't think it was at that place. Miss Kim... um, Shout out to Miss Kim. Miss Kim was looking like... Like, what? What the hell is happening around here? Miss Kim, ain't you glad? Ain't you glad? You said, I ain't going to take on this. Mm-mm. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is yeah, going on? I, and she yeah. literally put Tisha out, y'all. Yep. Now, I'm not going to say whether or not now, she did like, or didn't have that right. Yeah. It's her event. You can do yeah, whatever the fuck you want to do. I wouldn't have carried it that far. But at the same token, I wouldn't have been Tisha and I wouldn't have came. I wouldn't have came, yeah. So she was wrong for coming. And I think the way that Mel handled it could have been better. Yeah. Unless they at that place that some other details of some stuff that are happening. Yeah, so that's why that I we don't speak know. on it too much. Cause yeah, because, like, yeah, something, yeah, because those were some drastic matches. So the way I see it, if it had been the actual police there, she would have even told the police to escort her off. And what we don't want to do is keep putting black people in the eye yeah. of the police. Police, yeah. So, so and so, even Martel was like, "You really yeah, gonna do that?" Yeah, he was like, "You gonna do?" Yeah. So the shadiest of them all even was shocked by what y'all did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, oh that was my some dra- that's some drastic measures, man." Yeah. yeah. And then too, this is what <clears> I'm gonna speak on, and I'm gonna close at this. When I said at the end of my review last week, I'm gonna keep this at what's being shown on this God doing TV. On the timeline that we are watching. Yeah. And not the real life timeline. Is what I'm going to have to do. To get through this season. Because. What happened during the show. <laughs> is not I what's have... going on right now. In exactly. real life. Yeah. We, we know everything that's going on in real life. That Mel is living in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. She's filed for divorce. Ariane's supposed to be pregnant. I don't know if any of this skit is true. true. I do know that she did file for divorce. Do I believe it's a publicity stunt? Nothing, nothing <laughs> surprises me. For real, for yeah. real. No, I mean, real talk, they said she called the cops on him. I don't know. And I'm not going to say that I don't care because I do care when it comes to people's well-being, their lifestyle, oh, yeah. like their we marriages. Said, and what, but I'm yeah. not going to be so invested that I'm going to be combing through information trying to figure this skit out. Mm-hmm. If people bring it to me, I'm going to look at it, entertain it, and I'm going to move Sam, you on. serve me the tea, I'll drink it. Yeah. But I'm not <laughs> going to go get the leaves and dry out the leaves and make nah, tea bags out of it. Nah. I ain't doing none of that. So this is what we're working with. And that's the unfortunate thing about the world of social media now is yeah you you have what's presented to you 
and then you have what's happening now. Right now. Yeah. And sometimes I wish there was some kind of order that you can put on people that shut down. Yeah, at least until the, until the season is yeah. over. And then you can pick back up on your regular life yeah. on social media. And I'm not saying fake it, but what yeah. I am saying, if y'all ain't learned nothing from Jay-Z and Beyonce by now, is be seen when it's time to be seen. Yeah, or even if you post on social media, post as if we in the same timing with the show. Not it, yeah. Yeah, same yeah. time with the show. So, like, when we at this point, we seeing the baby. Now you can start posting baby pictures and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, but. I don't know. So, that's what we're going to have to do, y'all. Yeah. Straight from the VA. <laughs> the Dirty, Dirty South. Two out. Two down. Holla. Holla.